What's good, the Warriors? We in there. We're talking about WrestleMania and Raw after WrestleMania. Obviously, I did a video where I talked about Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns because that match was godlike. It deserved its own episode to find explosion. Now we're going to talk about WrestleMania. WrestleMania, was it good? Yeah, it was exceptionally good. One of the best WrestleManias I've watched in a long time. It was a wrestling entertainment extravaganza. One of the worst matches that I thought would be one of the worst matches turned out to be one of the best matches. Probably the second best match on the card, which was Sting versus Triple H. That match was godlike. It was entertaining. But the wrestling was actually really good. Now I thought these two wrestlers going to be boring, slow paced and they're going to stink out the joint. No. They were wrestling proper. Real moves, fast moves. Sting was, did a drop kick. I've never seen this guy do a drop kick since Back in the days when he used to fight Big Van Vader, or he used to fight in Japan, or, or any of those kind of matches. So to see Sting actually going in, it was hella good. You know, because Sting was about to beat Triple H, he had caught him in the Scorpion Deathlock. DX came, the, and Road Dog and Billy Gunn, and the other guy, don't care to say his name. He came down, and then they were going to help, they were helping Triple H beat Sting. And then the NWO came, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall... And Hulk, Hollywood, I was about to say Hulk Hogan. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. I went mental. I couldn't believe it. And they had the WO music. That shit was hype. In the end, Triple H won. Sting got skanked. He got skanked. The whole reason he didn't want to come in because he didn't want his legacy to get disrespected. That's the whole reason he hasn't come to WWE for 14 years. Two minutes, his legacy got disrespected and he did get disrespected his legacy did Triple H respected him and shook his hand at the end but that's because Triple H knows he took liberty and he disrespected him because everybody kind of felt a sour taste in their mouth the fact of seeing Sting lose like that WCW lost and now Sting has lost and Triple H has got nothing to do but brag about it it is what it is what else they had like an AJ Lee and Paige versus the Bella Twins didn't get it I really didn't understand it. It was like a tag match. The women looked fantastic. And it was a good match, actually. A really good match. But what do you expect with two of the most popularist female competitors in a match? Paige and AJ Lee. They're head over heels more popular. They're more popular than 90% of the men on Raw. And not because they look hella good. Because they're good on the mic. And they're entertaining. And they could wrestle. That's why they're more, they're more popular than 90% of the men on the roster. It is what it is. I didn't understand the match. It was a good match, but it's a tag team match. Yeah, WrestleMania. I guess they put it on there just to have women on the card. To say they're not sexist. Cool. You know, they had the match before. Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale. Big Show won. Whatever. I guess it's like a reward for him being like, whatever. The right hand man, the bodyguard to Seth Rollins. Who cares? He did with Tommy was in there. And it was cool to see the crowd embracing him there on Tommy. The crowd was going out of all the wrestlers. There was like good 20 wrestlers in there. And the crowd was going, he there yo, he there yo, NXT, NXT. I was so happy just to hear that. Because they're showing that they're embracing NXT and he did um, Itami and he's like the best because you got to remember Hideo Itami the when you see wrestlers like Seth Rollins CM Punk Daniel Bryan all those type of wrestlers even my man Prince De Finn Balor their fighting style it originates from Hideo Itami who was originally known as Kenta all the type of kicks that technique that you see with the go to sleep and the Bryan knees and the Bryan kicks and just the drop kicks from Finn Balor, it comes from Kenta. He's the originator of that type of style, those type of moves for the 200 to 220 pound, 220 pound to 190 pound wrestler. They, those moves come from Kenta, you know, so it's good to see that he's getting the respect that he deserves. Also, they had the um, Seth, Rollins, Seth Rollins versus Randy Orton. I didn't understand the match either. It was could have been better than what it was. I expected it to be better. Now, if you look before, on Raw, Randy Orton and Seth Rollins already had a match before to settle their differences, in which it was fair and square. No cheating. That match was incredible. Seth Rollins won. And that was the match where they turn on Randy Orton and they bust him up. But that night, that match that they had was ridiculous. It was a very, very good match. This match that they had at WrestleMania, it wasn't even 5% as good as that match. But maybe it's because Seth Rollins was saving himself for the main event of WrestleMania. Who knows? Whatever. I don't know. It's just... It is what it is. 
right? And of course, the Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins match, and um, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. That match was incredible. I did the video on that, so if you want to check that out, boom! Pretty good, isn't it? You know, that match is there, so you could check that out. And the match I want to talk about as well was Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt. Undertaker looked so good. He had the muscle, he had the look, he was menacing, he had an anonymous presence, and he won. The main important thing. The only thing I want to talk about, so I was very happy to see Undertaker back, and even though I feel like Vince McMahon, he's ruined it. He's ruined it already by taking the legacy away from Undertaker of the streak. Nothing we can do about it now. All we could do is keep moving forward. Undertaker's not a loser. He ain't embarrassed. He takes punishment and he always wins. Let's go with that and say it's good to see Undertaker back. I still want to say, looking at Raw, this is after WrestleMania, I'm still heartbroken of seeing Seth Rollins as champion. I mean, I'm happy he's champion, but it just doesn't feel right. The fact that he's champion, yet Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns put everything, they left everything. I know those two motherfuckers have got no regrets because they put everything they had into that match. And then for Seth Rollins to come out and participate in a match for less than two minutes and then win it, it's just not right. It's not right, but whatever. It was a hell of an exciting match. Credible conclusion to Raw, um, WrestleMania and beginning to Raw, but it still leaves a sour taste in my mouth. But because Seth Rollins is so good, I allow him. But I hate the fact that he's a coward. His character's like a coward-like character. It pisses me off. You know what I mean? Like the coward heel champion that hides behind the big show and Kane and JJ security. It pisses me off. Whatever. But what was good about this Raw? The crowd was nuts. They still give Roman Reigns a hard time, and I don't understand that. No one's going to challenge Brock Lesnar like that. You have to understand, you've only got Triple H and John Cena, the only two people that would even remotely fight and challenge Brock Lesnar. Nobody else, everyone's too scared to. Now Roman Reigns is in the mix. I'm not going to include Seth Rollins just yet, because I want to see Seth Rollins participate in a singles match against Brock Lesnar before I say he is one of those people in Triple H and John Cena and Roman Reigns division where they don't fear nobody and they're the best in WWE in my opinion because they went up about Bros Lesnar who is a, a machine and a former MMA, NCAA and WWE champion that's all I've got to say about that matches on Raw was exciting I'm going to talk about the best and most exciting matches that I saw Daniel Bryan vs Dolph Ziggler that match was ridiculous it was physical it was intense it was it was technical it was, it was a proper exchanges you know what I mean when they locked up the locked ups were ridiculous they were real they nobody wanted to give it was one was where they're tussling all over the place like when um Roman Reigns fought Brock Lesnar in the beginning and it was like a real scuff like when you saw John Cena versus Brock Lesnar it was like one of those ones where it was, you could see it was a real fight going on they were kicking each other punching each other real throwing each other all over the place Dolph Ziggler and Daniel Bryan the first match was amazing you know you had the Lucha Dragons from NXT come in and they were doing they did the Lucha 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 it was godlike. I was going nuts. And then Calesto. Calesto, he literally stole the show if it wasn't for Adrian Neville. Yes. Adrian Neville, the man that Gravity forgot, is now on Raw. And his performance was amazing. He did the Red Arrow. And what was so good about it, that's not even 7% of his, of, his, of his potential. So we've got a lot to see from Adrian Neville. And the fact that he's finally on Raw is amazing. Brock Lesnar went mental, you know what I mean, because Seth Rollins came out there, cheeky bastard. He came out with the championship and walked up into Brock Lesnar's face and he was like flaunting his thing like he was going to fight Brock Lesnar. Then he said, you know what, I don't think I'm going to fight you, my leg hurts. From curb stomping your face and uh, Roman Reigns into the floor. Sorry, mate. And that's when Brock Lesnar went nuts. He went absolutely mental. Chased after uh, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins would get away because of JJ security. But not before... He hurt Bradshaw and Booker T by turning over the announce table on top of them and then attacking Michael Cole for no reason. No reason whatsoever and a cameraman and f 5 in them. Stephanie sued his dumb ass, his big, big, ugly, Neanderthal gorilla ass. You know what I mean? Suspended him then fined him and I was like, good, get him out of here. You know what I mean? They had like a diva matchup was on there. John Cena versus Dean Ambrose. I mean, yeah, it was day four. It was an okay match. Was surprised that they fought the US Championship and John Cena won. 
What else can you say about it? And then the last match was, it was really cool. It was Randy Orton, the big guy, Ryback, and Roman Reigns came out. And they were fighting again, Seth Rollins, Big Show, and Kane. And that main event was really good. You feel like you see Roman Reigns unlocked. Because Roman Reigns looked like he was going ham. He didn't care. The crowd was still booing him. But he still went in and did his thing. Good shit, Roman Reigns. On the whole, it was an exciting action pack. The crowd was hype. I was hype. The matches were hype. Really, really good show. Really, really good show after us. It was either equal to or better than WrestleMania. Thanks for tuning in and listening to my review breakdown of WrestleMania 31 and War. Stick in there with me. Thanks for liking, supporting and commenting. And I'd like to hear what you thought about it. Let's do this thing. Thanks for tuning in and wait till my next video. Okay, Warriors. Live fabulously. I love you, Warrior. Miss you, baby. Take care, man.